the Suns are looking to defeat their Western Conference rival going into this game. Welcome to Los Angeles, home court advantage for the Lakers. We are live at the Staples Center. I'd like to welcome you to the NBA on 2K Sports. This is Kevin Harlan. Joining me, Clark Kellogg, Steve Kerr, and courtside, Doris Burke. And now time for the State Farm opening lineups. And guys, what do you think we'll be seeing from March and Gortat in this one? Well, the thing that I like about Gortat is how deceptive he is in, in the ways that he scores. I mean, he can score in transition. He can catch in the paint with either hand and finish. He can knock down a jump shot. I mean, he doesn't look like a star, but he's developing into one. Yeah, you know what, Steve, he really is. He might not be the biggest guy, but Gortat thrives on content. He can pack a punch, too. Just, just, I've watched him many times. Just leaning into you and bumping into you and working your way down the floor. He can definitely wear a player down with all of it. Now here's Kobe. Howard with a screen on Dudley. Kobe attacking. Shoots over Gortat. Kobe can't hit. The Lakers on D. Up top, Trogic. Guarded by Kobe. No good. Well contested shot there. And that's the key defensively. You've got to make them work for it. Challenge every shot. You know, one of the strongest players in the NBA, to me, has to be Meta World Peace, also known as the Artest, formerly known as Ron. You like that, don't you, Clark? <laughs> yeah, I like that play on words. I do like that play on words. But clearly, Ron, one of the strongest guys who have ever played. Beasley, covered by World Peace. Great tee that time from World Peace. So it's the Lakers now. Outside, Kobe. Nash hits to Gasol. Scola on him. Gasol passes to Howard. And that is good. And for Metal World Peace, some have said the name is a little ironic when you look at that elbow he threw that caught James Harden right in the head late last season in Los Angeles? Well, throughout his career, we know Meta World Peace, formerly Ron Artest, has been very erratic. His issues off the court well chronicled, and he's made progress. There's no denying that. And, but with anybody that's had issues, whatever the compulsive behavior is, there are flare-ups and relapses. And that's what we saw with Ron, unfortunately. He's done a lot of good things. He won the NBA Citizenship Award, and deservedly so. So hopefully we won't see any more episodes like that James Harden elbow. That was hard to watch, Kevin. Here's Kobe. Phoenix able to drain the three. Goes back up. Shot clock at four. Howard can't hit. Sons of God, one of three for the field to start this one so far. Here's Trogic. That is good. And I'm not sure anybody had a more difficult job than Mike Brown last year. Obviously a big market with stars on its roster, but more importantly, replacing a legend and trying to change the offensive system. Remember, the Lakers ran the triangle for about a decade. Gasol, that's good. And it's Kobe with the assist. Smart move with that mismatch he's got. You know what? That extra advantage sure pays off on the mid-range jump. Trogic with it. Guarded now by Nash. Here's Gortat, and that's good. And it's Dragic with the assist. And Mike Brown changing that offensive system. The triangle kind of an equal opportunity offense in a system where everyone touches the ball. But in Coach Brown's system, Steve, much more responsibility really put on the point guard. And that's why I think the addition of Steve Nash will help so much, Kevin. Uh, Nash is uh, used to having the ball in his hands all the time, directing traffic, really creating plays. And so the Lakers will be able to rely on Nash to set the table. I thought a, a season ago they were really struggling uh, offensively as a team, trying to figure out where they were going to score and how they were going to attack defenses. Stolen by Doug. And a foul called on the shot. Got him on the way up that time, so he'll shoot two right here. Well, Dudley brings so much to the team, uh, Kevin, because of his ability to do a lot of different things. He's become an excellent spot-up shooter. He's also a, a great defender, and he anticipates plays. He can get offensive rebounds. Seems to be the first one to a loose ball every time down the floor. Well, no doubt you always have to be wary of a guy like Dudley because of that. It's more than just keeping an eye on him. You have to be in his shirt or he'll float out to where he can get open and knock down shots all game long. Here's what the Lakers are going with right now. Antoine Jameson's checked in for Gasol. Barnes comes in for Meta World Peace. 
Jody Meeks, he's checked in for Kobe. And Steve Blake is subbed in for Steve Nash. You know, not a lot of people knew what to make of the Lakers last season. I mean, first year with Mike Brown as the head coach, an aging group, a maturing group, if you will. But they showed they still have that Laker magic at times. Here is Telfair following the bucket by the Lakers. On the wing, Brown connects on the 17-footer. Boy, he's got a real comfort level with the mid-range game. I mean, he's got the ability not to let the defense bother him when he's locked into that shooting zone. Back to the Lakers, they struggled at times, but by the end of the season, Steve, they looked just as good as any team in contention for the title. Well, you knew that, uh, you know, it was going to take some time uh, with the new coach as they put everything together. Uh, but defensively, that team was really good all season long. Offensively, they had their growing pains, but by the end of the year, I thought they had kicked it into gear pretty well. And Phoenix has possession following the three by the Lakers. Telfair gets the bucket. Great pick, and that gave him enough space to get to the hoop and finish. There's 31 seconds left to play here in the first. Shot off the screen. Blake misses. Suns lean by four. Johnson kicks to Brown. 14 feet away. There's the bucket. Good. Brown's got his second bucket. Oh, they're scoring efficiently. They look very focused at the offensive end. A nice start, no question, making all the right moves here early. Howard kicks to Blake. A three ball, and that's not going to go. The basket's coming early and often in the first quarter. Suns ahead, leading by six. And don't go away. We'll be back with the action for the start of the second quarter in just a moment. Now the second quarter getting ready to start up. And taking a look at the Suns' performance here, Clark and Steve, what have they been doing or not doing? Just the start they wanted to this game. Solid offense. They got good ball movement. Established a nice rhythm. Yeah, not stagnant at all. Free-flowing and fluid at the offensive end. And now let's check out the lineups courtesy of Gatorade. All fueled up and ready to go. Here's the second quarter of play. And Phoenix looking who they've got on the floor. Beasley out there with Channing Fry. Then it's Brown, then it's Johnson, and it's Drogic in at the point guard position. Barnes dishes to Gasol. It's hauled in by Fry. Yeah, trying to put a little mustard on the hot dog there. That, that was just convert the shot. Come on. I see you. Well, you think about the trade that brought Pau Gasol to the Lakers. That's what transformed them into a championship team because he gave him that interior presence, the passing ability as a big man, and the compliment to Kobe Bryant. It's been a huge factor in L.A. Now let's send it to Doris on the sideline. Well, guys, I think it's accurate to call the Dwight Howard situation a saga, and it has at least for the moment calmed down. A trade to the Los Angeles Lakers has now thrust them squarely into the championship picture. First, the acquisition of star point guard Steve Nash, and now the best center in the league. The tough Western Conference just got tougher. Kevin? The story of the offseason, no question. Thank you, Doris. And that one's good, Barnes. Going back to Gasol, you know, his ability to play both the center and the power forward position has been a huge help. Yeah, always one of my favorite players to watch, Pau Gasol. Quick, skilled, he's seven feet tall, every bit of it. Can play the four and face up and hurt people. I think he's gotten better each and every year he's been in L.A., and that's a testament to his work ethic. Looking at who's out there now for the Lakers. Dwight Howard, he's checked in for Gasol. World Peace comes in for Antoine Jameson. Jody Meeks, he's checked in for Kobe. And Steve Blake is subbed in for Steve Nash. Here's Telfair. Dwight Howard grabs the board. Even though he missed it, he couldn't pass up that chance. Yeah, that's an easy jump shot. You got to take that one. You know, it's been a steady downward turn for the Suns in the past few years, Kevin. What once was a team built around speed and several stars is now a bit of a potpourri of talent. I mean, you have to think they're on the verge of trying to rebuild things there. Suns leading by three. He feeds it to Gortat. Overworld peace. Gortat, the pass to Scola. 
The kick out to Brown. He passes to Telfair. Guarded by Blake. There's a screen by Gorton. Now Telfair. Pass to Dudley. Six on the shot clock. Backing down is Gortat. A second chance effort. And in he goes for the easy two. And the Suns lead by five. Back of the Suns. You'll have to find a player or two to build around. Steve, what are your thoughts as you extend the Suns from this point on? Well, right now for the Suns, you know, they don't have uh, too many young prospects, but they did a nice job in the, in the draft the last couple of years. Uh, Kendall Marshall, a new point guard. Also, uh, the big guy Morris has, uh, has looked like he's got a, a future with the club. So uh, I think they're heading in the right direction at this point. Three minutes of action so far in the second quarter. Telfair kicks to Gortat. The pass to Telfair. There's a screen by Gortat. Scola dishes to Gortat. And good on the basket. Book it. Gortat's got six points. Points in the paint have been the main course or main entree, if you will. They just keep pounding it inside. Now they're seeing no resistance defensively in the paint area, so the defense has got to be tougher. Big group substitution here for the Lakers. Al Gasol's checked in for Howard. Jamison comes in for Matt Barnes. Kobe's checked in for Meeks. And it's Nash in for Steve Blake. And the Suns here with a different look. Channing Fries checked in for Gortat. Beasley comes in for Luis Scola. Wesley Johnson's checked in for Jared Dudley. And it's Drogic in for Sebastian Telfair. Kobe gets a screen from Jamison. Kobe, the pass to World Peace. That's in, coming off an assist by Kobe. Boy, what an amazing career Kobe Bryant has had. Last year, he was a close second place in the league in scoring average, passing Shaquille O'Neal to become fifth all-time on the NBA scoring list. And at 34 years of age, Kobe's got a chance to climb that leaderboard even further before it's all said and done. Drogic with it, defended by Nash. Drogic gets the bucket. I like the way they're working the ball inside because when you do that, you get higher percentage shots and typically good things happen. And keeping us updated from the sideline, let's swing it over to Doris Burke for an update. Hi, Doris. The Phoenix Suns training staff and doctors are renowned league-wide. Back in 2000, they developed their unorthodox methodology for injury prevention and rehab. They evaluate players' flexibility in eight different areas four times a week, do manual muscle testing for strength, assess movement, and even take measurements of players' legs, ankles, and hips. This allows them to determine which muscles are tight or weak, which joints are out of whack, and they look for and find any dysfunction. It's this understanding and application of what's called kinesiology that's enabled them to have such remarkable results. Kevin? They do amazing work, Doris. Thank you. Now, here is world peace. Six to shoot. Shoots over Brown, and again it's the Lakers. And he will punish an opponent for giving him that much room for mid-range. He'll hit that all day. Kicks it to Fry. Here's the three, and that's good. And it's Dragic with the assist. Dragic has got three assists now in this one. From deep. No good trying to beat the buzzer. And a tight game here.
Kevin Harlan, Steve Kerr, Clark Kellogg, and Doris Burke. Take it away. Welcome back to Los Angeles, California. The Staples Center, part of the L.A. Live development here in downtown. Suns leading by four. And, of course, the Lakers shipped off Lamar Odom before last season started. And uh, just got a late first-round pick from Dallas in return. Not exactly uh, what you would expect in terms of, uh, you know, a player of Lamar Odom's caliber. You'd, you'd think they could have done better with that deal. Kobe, Meta, and Paul Gasol are the guys that make up the two, three, and four slots. Nash out there with Howard. That's who's in the game for the Lakers. Here's Drogic, defended by Nash. Drogic kicks to Scola. Four on the clock. Over Howard. And the Suns tack on two more. The Lakers ended up being fine with how they played, but really, as you said, it, it seems like they missed out on, on getting more in return. Yeah, the whole trade appeared to be sort of a panic move. I mean, they didn't play well early, but ultimately adjusted. And I think that trade definitely hurt them early last season. And about a minute of action so far in the third quarter. Wasted no time on that one. And it's a nine-point Suns lead. He's as close to impossible to defend as anybody, I think. I mean, he can just torch the defense in so many ways. And World Peace backs down. Over Beasley. World Peace, good! And so here's Phoenix. And uh, we're about a minute and a half here into the second half. It's Scola with the drive. And it's Gasol with the rebound. You know, Luis Scola for his career, one of the more underrated big men in the league. But last season, his production wasn't really up to his usual standards. Numbers down a little bit across the board, but you know, still in his early 30s. I feel like he's got plenty left in his career. Here is Gorton following the basket by Kobe Bryant. And Gortak kicks to Skull. And that's out of bounds. Phoenix will retain possession. Some changes for the Lakers. Antoine Jameson's checked in for Gasol. Barnes comes in for Meta World Peace. And Steve Blake is subbed in for Steve Nash. Phoenix also making some changes. Channing Fries checked in for Skull. Johnson comes in for Michael Beasley. And it's Brown in for Jared Dudley. Puts it up. Off the inbound. Fry. Good. Fry's got five. And when you look at Scola and his chances of bouncing back from last season, big men do tend to age, it seems like, more graceful in this NBA. Yeah, I think that's the case across the board. I mean, his game has never really been based on athleticism. It's a fairly close-to-the-floor game based on skill, and that lends itself to longevity, Kevin. It's kind of like you. You've got those great pipes, those <laughs> lungs, man, and you can survive a long time as a broadcaster because of it. Here's the screen. He kicks to Brown. Dishes it to Dragic. Good ball movement here by the Suns. Lock at six. From downtown. Rebounded by the Lakers. Now defensively, they did a great job of staying tight on him. Suns have never really been a formidable team on the road in recent years. And last season was pretty much par for the course. They finished 14 and 19 away from home. And that was part of why they missed the postseason. If you look back on the recent seasons of the Sun, they, they just can't seem to get any momentum away from Phoenix. I mean, even when they last won the division, Steve, they weren't too great traveling away from, from Arizona. Well, it's kind of a rebuilding or retooling situation for the team, Kevin, and uh, they've, they've had to start making the transition for the future, but uh, they're kind of stuck in no man's land, and that's why uh, they drafted Kendall Marshall to be their uh, point guard of the future, and uh, it's going to take some time, but, you know, the NBA kind of runs in cycles, and right now the, the Suns are trying to get back on that, that up cycle. You know, with the Lakers, it's all about winning titles. Anything else is considered a disappointment, and they were tested early, though. Here is Telfair. Hey, yo, busy, busy, busy. 
on the wing Brown, guarded by Kobe. Beasley dishes to Fry. There's three pointers off the mark. Go back to that matchup for the Lakers against Denver. Kobe's illness had the uh, stomach flu, our chest out with the suspension. Meta World Peace, you know, had gotten the late regular season suspension with the elbow to the side of the head of James Harden. Steve, they were certainly facing their struggles. Yeah, and it, it, those struggles caught up to them in the next round, Kevin, when they uh, lost to the Oklahoma City Thunder, a younger, more talented team winning in that one. So for the Lakers, you know, moving forward, they've got a lot of talent, but it's aging talent. And sooner or later, they're going to have to get younger on that roster. Lakers trailed by four. Nash right side. Back to Jameson. He's up against Beasley. Elbow shot. They get it back. Power. Powers down the dunk. Look at that effort. Does he set a great example out there or what? On plays like that, he does. Sure, what, what work on the offensive glass we see with him. Yeah, that was awesome. Put back with the slam. Are you kidding me? The Suns have gone 4-7 of seven to get things started here in the second half. Telfair kicks it up. Over World Peace. And it's Phoenix scoring again. Lakers have gotten five of eight shots to fall for them in the third quarter. A nice 62% from the field. Nash kicks to Kobe. Power. It's hauled in by Fry. I thought he rushed it a little bit, guys, because he had a clean look, just lost his focus. Telfair kicks to Fry. Passes it to Beast. Just three on the clock. Foul call that time on the way up. That'll give him two chances at the free throw line here. The Suns shooting their third and fourth free throw shots of the night. Well, you take a look back to last year, guys. This is a club that converted about 76% of its free throws. First one falls for them. Both teams deciding to change it up. And he makes the first, but misses the second. And that's it for the third quarter. Both teams scoring well as we head to the fourth. Third Suns ahead, up five. We're going to step aside for just a second, but join us right back here for the start of the fourth quarter. Next. Hello and thanks for joining us, folks. The fourth quarter of play should begin momentarily. Now, let's check in with Doris Burke for the Sprite Uncontainable Game. Doris? Well, Kev, the Suns come away with the Uncontainable Game. They had a plan to get an edge in this one, and they executed it perfectly. Hard to see them giving this one away in the final period. All right, Doris, thanks. Lakers trailed by five. On the court for the Suns, Scola and Gortat, they're inside. Filling out the wings are Brown and Dudley. And it's Dragic in at the point. Now, here's Nash. At the lead pass. And Howard slams it home. Well, his dunking ability is unquestioned. I mean, he plays above the rim. And he won't hesitate to crank it down on you, given the opportunity. And quite honestly, I think his finishing ability sets him apart as well. I mean, he's more than comfortable attacking the heart of the defense and finishing over it. Michael Beasley, he's checked in for Phoenix. And Phoenix, I thought, was one of the surprise teams in the Western Conference a year ago. And one of the reasons was that they really played well within the conference. I think a lot of people expected them to struggle against that deep Western Conference, but uh, they, they played well and I think had a much better record than, uh, than most people predicted. Now here's Kobe. Howard setting the pick for Kobe. 
Kobe gets a screen from Howard. Now the dish to Barnes. Inside to Gasol. And he hits it to tie the game up. And you look at how they played last year. They finished 23 and 25 against the West, which isn't a bad mark, Clark, by any means for a 500 team. Yeah, but the Suns know that hovering around 500 overall and against the West really isn't going to cut it, Kevin. I mean, adding depth up front should help them compete against those tough Western Conference forwards. Scola, no luck. Lakers shooting has been just great so far, up at 56%. And that one's good, Barnes. Boy, poor defense at both ends. It kind of reminds me of your teams, Clark. <laughs> well, not exactly. We did give a little better effort. I mean, neither squad really digging in at that end. At least we tried to play defense. Phoenix with the ball. After the basket by the Lakers. Five to shoot. Rockets the pass to Stola. And so he draws the foul on the shot. A trip to the line to shoot two. Luis Scola from Argentina, one of my favorite players in the league. He's, he's nothing special athletically. Doesn't get off the floor real high, but he's so skilled. He can pass, he can shoot, and he finds angles to score in the paint. And he is really tough. First free throw is good. And Scola, one of the great players in Europe before he even came to the NBA. And he's been as good as Everton. Yeah, no question. He holds his own on the glass, plays physically, and he can score inside and out with a variety of moves. He's a quality, quality starting power forward. And the Lakers making a change here. World Peace has checked in. You know, the Lakers weren't quite as dominant as they were in 2010-11, but it wasn't because of how they played against the West. They, they really did a nice job against their conference rivals. The defense caught dozing off that time. Those open dunks, pretty high percentage. Yeah, you're not going to miss many of those. I mean, this is uh, really a poor defensive effort. Beasley. Barnes grabs the miss. 32-16 and 16 was their end mark of the season against the West. The Lakers certainly showed they can play with every team that was a contender out there. And, and, and they were tough, but it, it just at the end, it just did not come together. Well, nonetheless, winning two out of every three games you play in conference action is a good recipe for finishing near the top of the standings. The Lakers would have loved to have been that number one seed, but they didn't get it. It wasn't because of how they played in the West, though. It was, I think, that they were the third seed in the uh, Western Conference, as mm -hmm. it turned out. The first free throw is good. Dwight Howard. He's checked in for Matt Barnes. And so Nash nails both of them. Well, you just knew he wasn't going to miss there. Not with so much riding on him. Dragic dishes to Skola. That's in coming off an assist from Dragic. Dragic has got five assists in the game. The Lakers in the lead. And just about three minutes through the fourth quarter here. Nash kicks to Kobe. Howard with a screen on Dudley. And Kobe, here we go. And the shot is good. Well, that makes five of their last six makes coming from inside. Yeah, really focused on getting the ball into the paint because they're taking advantage of very porous defense down there. The free throw drops for Kobe. Great and one play right there. Tacks another point onto the lead. And I'll tell you what, guys, he's really showing us a killer instinct. And the Suns call time here. They're behind by five. 158 left in the fourth quarter. Doris Burke has some information for us, Doris. Guys, over that last break, I listened in on Alvin Gentry's huddle. He told us, guys, I know we can do this, fellas. Let's maximize every possession and get after it and just watch. Things will go our way. Kevin? Here is Dudley. Feeds to Dragic. There's the triple. Rebound by Meta World Peace. Here are the Lakers with the ball. They're on a 14-4 run right now. Here's Kobe. Kobe can't get that one to fall. 
That's his comfort zone, so defensively, really nice job challenging the shot. Right, it's the best to be. Cannot hit. Well, the effort was there, but he just couldn't quite find his way through trap. Nash kicks to Kobe. It's all set in the pick for Kobe. Over Krogic. And the basket by Kobe. Well, I like that he's come up with some big baskets for this team to help him out in getting this lead. 105 left in the fourth quarter. Burchot dishes to Dragic. Another shot. It falls! Oh, and that cuts the lead to just five. No question about it, guys. He's been one of their best performers today. Lakers have gotten it done so far from the field here in the fourth. Going six for seven. There's 45 seconds left in the fourth quarter of this one. And Kobe, here we go. That's good. And the Lakers lead by seven. And they add to this lead, trying to close this game out. I think it would take a lot of luck and maybe then some. I mean, might be time to pack this thing in. Towards hot misses. This game looks like they've got it just about wrapped up. You're exactly right. I mean, take care of the ball, work the clock. It's a wrap. Yep, nice game. Now here's Kobe. Shot and game clock separated by five. Gasol kicks the world peace. Shot clock at six. Back to Gasol. A rebound by Gortat. The defense got away with one there. I mean, usually he'll hurt you if you give him that kind of a shot. And so the Lakers take the win. They came, they saw, they conquered. Hey, Kevin, to me, any win is a good win. Thanks for tuning in to the NBA on 2K Sports. For Clark Kellogg, Steve Kerr, and Doris Moore, this is Kevin Harlan. We'll see you next time. And now, our Jordan player of the game, Kobe Bryant.